Hello and welcome to Stiff Joints Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the NECA Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D Ultimate Jason. So let's start off with the packaging. So let's start off with the packaging. So um, it's a, a very nice box, it's your standard Ultimate figure box, but this one, seeing as the film was in 3D, has this uh, sort of 3D effect that is, uh, uh, well, questionable, but uh, the knife looks good anyway, it's just the body at the back that kind of ruins it. Um, the, the side has a picture of the figure, and it's on the same on both sides, and then at the back of the box you've got your uh, blurb here, and uh, you, you can pause that and read that if you want, and uh, you got pictures of the figure here, and uh, some of the accessories are seen down here, t t two of them, no, or just one actually, because that isn't in it, this isn't in it, this isn't in it, and neither's this, but these are, um, which is cool. And uh, it has the velcro here at the side, and then the figure obviously would be in there, and then you get a picture of the figure here, which is uh, actually quite inaccurate to the rest of the figure, um, actually. Um, but we'll, we'll ignore that, and uh, we'll uh, get to the figure. So, here is the uh, figure. It stands around uh, seven inches, it's, uh, or six, seven, six, seven inches basically. It's not the most uh, tall figure in the world or anything. Um, he has a sort of standard Jason Voorhees uh, neck figure articulation. So he, um, he joins at the arms, a sort of a, a ball jointed head which does come off. So, uh, sort of kind of a swivel at the waist but it's not very smooth. Um, the arms can go out and obviously move forward, do a full 360 if you want, and uh, this as well, and this also moves. Um, the, the legs also have uh, articulation, uh, unlike early uh, Freddy Krueger releases. This thing here is, I don't know what that um, would be called. Uh, a crotch crotch flap, yeah, this came undone. I don't know why they make it so that it comes apart like that, but I, I take it out of the box and it's just like that automatically. Uh, so the paint is actually quite nice, it's uh, quite detailed, it's not just like a solid colour or anything. So uh, dark greens, light greens in there. This is all rubber as well, uh, the uh, main piece of his um, clothes. You get uh, sort of um, blood here, and then uh, some blood on the um, the leg here, if it wants to focus maybe. That would be pretty nice, uh, pretty swenching. Uh, kind of, but there's, there's a brown's there, dirty look, and his uh, shoes are, you know, pretty alright, I guess. Uh, you know, I think they reuse a lot of the shoes for Jason Voorhees figures anyway. Uh, his hands uh, feature a fair amount of detail. Um, the nails aren't really painted a different colour, and that's just fortunate, this one here which just so happens to have dirt in it because of the paint but yeah they're not the hands aren't like the most detailed things in the world or anything um, and they don't even hold the, the accessories too well to be honest so on uh, accessories he comes with the signature hockey mask he comes with two of them because he has interchangeable heads but no, this is the part three Jason obviously so this is the very very first appearance of the hockey mask and uh, obviously this doesn't have the the axe mark that you um, are used to seeing with Jason and uh, so this the straps are sort of rubber and that is different from earlier ones it's a little uh, misshapen honestly the molds not right as you can see here at the very bottom it doesn't look right does it uh, but it's not too bad, and um, you know, it, it's it's very nice. It's 
much better than the earlier ones. And we can see the head here, which is very well done, very movie accurate. One problem is the fact that his neck is covered in blood. And I think this, the ultimate figure, is based more on the uh, bile damaged figure that got released, I don't know when it was, 2011, 12, 13, something like that. Um, and it just looks a bit strange, but it it's not too noticeable if you put the mask on. It really sort of uh, takes your attention away from it, and it's not too bad. So let's switch the heads over um, to this one here. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, there we go here which is a uh, far more reminiscent of the part 4 Jason Luke but this is after he gets the axe shoved in his skull at the end of part 3 so yeah here we go this is the reason his neck's covered in blood here and his face is also covered in blood but the mask here is of a, a much more sort of accurate shape well, this bit here's lifted up the uh, the sort of crack here. The right side has been lifted up, which is a little strange. Why the camera just does not want to focus to the I don't know what it is with the light or whatever. But just take my word. I'll take it off even. Maybe that'll help. Uh, here we go. Yeah, this bit here is sort of like lift, sort of raised a little bit rather than being down here, it's up here which is a little annoying but uh, there's more sort of wear and tear on this one uh, compared to the other mask it would love to focus but obviously it doesn't so just take my word for it I guess and uh, here we have the second head sculpt here, which is very cool looking. Um, the blood paint is fairly good until the little sort of speckles here, here, they don't look right. And I think they could have done a much better job, and it's a real letdown considering how cool and well done the rest of it is. Um, his teeth actually have a lot of detail as well. Um, they're well done. Ah, it's messed it up. So, moving on from the figure, we're going to talk about the accessories now. So, I'm just standing up over here and we'll take a look at them individually. So, let's start with the um, signature machete. Uh, this is a, a very. Uh, it isn't the same as the Part 2 machete, which surprised me to find out recently. There's more of a hook at the end of the part two one. Now the machete, you know, it's your average machete, except it's not the same mould as all of the other ones, I don't think. Cause, uh, I know for definite it's not the same as the Jason Lives one, because I own that. Um, but, it, you know, the paint's fair, fairly nice. It, it doesn't, it's not covered in sort of blood like the image on the box. And a lot of the other machetes tend to have blood, or they used to, I don't know, but, um, you know, it's it's your standard, well painted, nice detail, not a lot of detail, but the detail that is here is, it's nice. Uh, the next one up is this knife thing, which is just a bit crap, uh, I don't really remember it in the movie, I'll be honest, uh, it was probably in it, I just can't remember. Um, and it's fine, blood, blood is on this for some reason, um, and the detail, it, it's fine, it's kind of flat blood, and it, it's kind of, I don't know whether it's scraping off or something, but, you know, it's, a, uh, it's nice to have. The next one up here is the axe, which is, uh, it's alright, it's not very convincing, the wood effect on this one, um, it's very fake looking, um, it's like an actual plastic axe that you could get in a Halloween shop or something, this should be the one that goes in his skull, I think, uh, I'm sure, but it doesn't, 
doesn't really work, uh, to be honest, and that's a little disappointing. Uh, I don't know how it should go in, but it doesn't, and I, I don't know what's up with that. That's a shame, anyway. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about is the Pitchfork, which is, uh, this is nice. You want to be careful with it, though, because I imagine these would will snap off relatively easily. The wood is very flat, yeah, again, um, but the metal looks quite nice. Yeah, this is, a. Uh, the next one is, uh, the Fire Poker. Which uh, isn't actually, you know, I think it definitely burns uh, the edge, I'm sure. Because it's all sort of orange and hot in the movie at one point. Um, this is nice to have anyway, it's nothing too special, uh, but the the mould is f f quite nice and uh, fairly impressive to be honest. Um, be careful this as well, this could snap relatively easily and the final um, accessory and my personal favorite um, of the figure is the spear gun that is just oh it's a great great scene and um, this is arguably the best accessory I have a feeling this is going to snap eventually uh, it's kind of bent and I don't, I don't want to try and bend it back into place but the paint is nothing too special but it is well done and it, you know it's well painted I'll give it that um, for sure. Uh, so, can he hold a lot of these? He can hold the spear gun relatively well, uh, um, I think. Maybe not as well as I would like it to be, but he still holds it quite well. And uh, can he hold the uh, pitchfork or whatever in uh, not very well to be honest that's the biggest issue with this figure is that I don't think he holds th the, his accessories as well as he could anyway because um, this is just a bit you know just fall about uh, the knife I think he holds this reasonably well actually yeah this is quite well and it's a shame that he holds it quite well because I don't like it that much. It's not very nice looking. It's not. Oh dear. It's uh, it's fine, I guess. And uh, this just it doesn't look right. Jason doesn't look right with like knives. Um, the fire poker. I just don't think he can hold flat out. Uh, prove me wrong. No, no, not really. I don't know how how there's a this. A, this gap thing here and, uh, but it's like you can't push it in and it's, it's just uh, crap it's crap that sucks that's really really not all that good and then um, here is the axe which he also can't hold very well um, I, don't, I don't know I, I guess that's all I, you shouldn't it's the fact that other Jasons hold their weapons fairly well and this one can and the worst offender for this is the machete that you can get him to hold most of the time but it does kind of do that and if any sort of slight nudge it's a pain to get back in a position and most of the time it just doesn't look right and he ends up holding it here and that's just not right really is it? it doesn't look very good at all but you know, at least he can hold them, you know, most of them anyway. But I, I, I do think this is a very good figure, and it is obviously much better than the original release for sure. Um, I would recommend it for any fan of Friday the 13th. And um, yeah, so that's uh, the first Stiff Joints review in six months. I will be doing more. I have gotten a lot of things over the past few months to talk about and I'm going to continue to get things to talk about. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.